protein should be consumed in adequate quantities daily especially if you are an active adult however it's not just the quantity of protein that matters but the quality as well all proteins whether animal based or plant based comes with the extras when you eat any protein foods animal based or plant based they don't just contain protein in them but also fats carbohydrates vitamins minerals and even preservatives hormones antibiotics and so forth the extras in either the animal based or the plant based protein source can be beneficial or harmful for the human body beneficial extras are the micronutrients while compounds like hormones and antibiotics are harmful extras that are bad for your health in this video i'll discuss the good and the bad extras in both the animal based protein foods and plant based protein foods i'll then conclude which protein source is better for your health i'll also provide useful tips and strategies for both vegans and non vegetarians to ensure they consume all the essential nutrients that their bodies need on a daily basis let's begin with the animal based proteins let's first discuss the beneficial extras that are abundant in animal proteins the first one is zinc the rda for zinc is 8 to 11 mg per day now meats are high in zinc dairy products also have adequate amounts of zinc but if you're a vegan or a vegetarian who do not eat eggs or include dairy you may be deficient in zinc now even though legumes like uh, chickpeas dal contain adequate zinc amounts they also contain phytates now phytates are anti nutrients that inhibit the absorption of zinc this means zinc is not absorbed effectively from legumes the next nutrient is vitamin b12 now this essential vitamin is mainly found in animal foods such as beef liver salmon milk and eggs a large percentage of vegans and vegetarians if they don't eat uh, eggs or dairy they may be deficient in vitamin b12 as as hardly any plant food contains it omega 3s the benefits of omega 3s are immense these essential fatty acids are required from a diet on a daily basis as a bodies cannot manufacture them on their own now omega 3s reduce inflammation and lowers the risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease cancer and arthritis now omega 3s are abundantly found in fatty fish they are also found in plant based foods like walnuts chia and flax seeds but they are in the form of ala and our bodies need to convert them into dha and epa which is a bio available form unfortunately the conversion ra ratio is so low that it is challenging to consume optimal dosage from plant based foods you can check out my video on omega 3s where i've explained how to manage your daily omega 3 intake find the video link in the description box below so these were the beneficial extras you get when you eat proteins from animal sources now let's discuss the harmful extras that come along with animal based foods first let me make a clear distinction between fresh meats and processed meats now processed meats include but are not limited to ham beef jerky sausages salami pepperoni hot dogs smoked meats and canned meats the fresh meats are mixed meats in their raw form like beef pork lamb chicken etc now meats are processed to enhance flavor and increased shelf life nitrates are the preservatives most commonly used to improve the flavor and appearance of meats nitrates also help prevent the bacteria inside the meat from growing and gives the meat the pinkish red color that makes it attractive to buyers let me quickly give you a biochemistry lesson on nitrates and nitrites and let's truly understand if they're harmful as conventional wisdom states now nitrates and nitrites are chemical compounds that contain oxygen and nitrogen atoms please note most of the nitrates and nitrites you consume are from your vegetables and not from processed meats carrots leafy green vegetables and other vegetables contain these compounds now organic vegetables will have less as they are not sprayed with nitrate fertilizers now most nitrates are not consumed directly but are converted from nitrates by bacteria found in our mouths now you will be surprised to know that nitrates and nitrites are beneficial for us this is because of their ability to contribute to nitric oxide formation nitrogen 
gas is beneficial especially for older adults as it helps dilate blood vessels and lower blood pressure besides having many other health benefits. However, nitrates found in processed meats combined with the protein in the meats to form nitromines. High heat cooking can also cause nitrites to form nitromines. Nitromines are carcinogenic compounds that increase the risk of certain types of cancer like bowel cancer. Barbecuing, frying, etc. can also produce other carcinogenic chemicals such as heterocyclic aromatic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons which increase the risk of certain cancers. Since there is little protein in vegetables when compared with meats, hardly any nitromines are formed from nitrates in vegetables. Furthermore, other nutrients like vitamin C fiber which are abundant in vegetables which are known to reduce nitromines formation. The problem with processed meats does not end with nitrates or nitrites. The salt added to these products to increase shelf life is also a very big concern. It's common knowledge that high amounts of salts and other preservatives are added to fresh food items to preserve them. There is clear evidence that sodium chloride, which is also known as stable salt, increases blood pressure and therefore the risk of heart disease. On average, processed meat contains four times more sodium and 50% more nitrate preservatives than fresh meats. Renata Mika et al. conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis of nearly 1,600 studies comprising a total of 1.2 million subjects. The study conducted by the Harvard School of Public Health concluded that eating processed meats such as canned meats, sausage, bacon, etc. were associated with a 42% higher risk of heart disease and a 19% higher risk of type 2 diabetes. Surprisingly, the researcher did not find any evidence of a higher risk of heart disease or type 2 diabetes among individuals who ate unprocessed red meat such as beef, pork or lamb. An article published on BBC titled Processed Meats Early Death Link concluded that diets high in processed meats were linked to cardiovascular disease, cancer and early death. The article described a study that was 13 years long and included 10 European countries. Yet another study in the UK followed 262,195 women over 7 years and concluded that consuming processed meats but not Red meat may increase breast cancer risk. Guys, I like to believe that the saturated fat in the fresh red meats are not bad for you despite conventional wisdom. A non-vegetarian should eat fresh meats instead of processed meats. Another thing concerning meats is whether the meats come from CAFOs or is pasture raised. Unfortunately, 99% of meat, dairy and eggs in the US come from factory farms or CAFOs, which are also known as confined feeding animal operations. Animals from CAFO live in poor conditions. To increase survival rate, they are pumped with antibiotics. They are also fed hormones to increase their growth. After all, meat is sold by weight. The faster an animal grows and the heavier the meat, the bigger profits for the companies that sell them. The bottom line is, if you're a regular meat eater and consume eggs and drink milk, I strongly urge you to be conscious of where your animal-based protein is sourced, not only for the sake of the environment, but also for better health for yourself and your family. Now let's discuss the plant-based proteins and the good extras. So the following micronutrients are missing from animal foods. The first one is fiber. There is no fiber in animal food, so it's imperative to eat fruits, vegetables, whole grains, oats and other plant-based foods to get your daily dose of fiber. The optimal fiber intake for men is 35 to 40 grams per day. For women, it's it should be between 25 to 30 grams per day. The benefits of fiber are immense and, in, and include reduced risk of heart disease, lower colon cancer risk. Fiber also helps increase satiety, the feeling of fullness, which is an important factor in weight loss. Another nutrient that animal-based foods are deficient is, vi is vitamin C. Vitamin C is mostly found in fruits and vegetables like tomatoes, kiwis, oranges and papayas. Very, very few animal food contains vitamin C like beef liver and oysters. Plant-based proteins and bad extras. 
Well, um, there are no bad extras in plant-based uh, protein food sources like lentils, beans, seeds, and nuts. For a vegan or a pure vegetarian, lentil, beans, seeds, and nuts are protein-rich foods that will satisfy most of your protein requirement. If you can choose the organic variety, then it is the ideal option. Also, try and opt for unsalted almonds or cashews to reduce the sodium intake. And lastly, ensure that you avoid using vegetable oils for cooking your lentils or beans. If you are a vegan or a pure vegetarian, I would recommend eating various protein-based foods daily. Protein combining is important to ensure a steady supply of essential amino acids. Some examples of plant-based foods high in proteins are, are dal, all types, beans, all varieties, nuts, all types, seeds like chia seeds and flax seeds, oats, quinoa, vegetables both cooked and raw, all varieties, whole wheat, roti, etc. Rice, ideally brown rice or any unprocessed variety. Lastly, it's a good idea to supplement your diet with vitamin B12 if you are a vegan. Vitamin B12 is abundant in whole milk and whole eggs. If you are a vegetarian who include these animal-based foods in your diet, then you're fine. But for vegans, supplementing with uh, vitamin B12 is essential. Nutritional yeast is one of the rare plant-based foods that contain vitamin B12. You can also opt for foods that are fortified with vitamin B12 else supplementing is the most convenient option to add optimal intake of vitamin b12 here's how you can increase your zinc intake in your diet try and eat a handful of nuts few times in a week which includes cashew nuts and as they have a good amount of zinc soak legumes like dal rajma chole in water before you cook them this will increase the bioavailability of zinc and other minerals in them fermenting and sprouting lentils and beans is also a great way to enhance the nutrition bioavailability significantly if you're a hardcore non-vegetarian getting enough high quality protein should not be a problem however as discussed above the source of of animal protein matters. Livestock is poorly treated. Compared with grass-fed animals, they produce inferior meats that include compounds like hormones, antibiotics, etc. that can be very harmful to your body and may lead to a variety of diseases over time. So I suggest three things. Do your best to choose meats, milk and eggs from the highest quality sources, ideally from grass-fed or pasture resources. Grass-fed animal foods will cost you more, but if health is your priority, it's possible to adjust your budget accordingly. The availability of grass-fed animal foods may be an issue, so you will need to do a thorough search. If you're persistent, I'm all I'm optimistic you will find something superior to what you're currently consuming. If you cannot find grass-fed meats, choose organic meats with no added hormones or antibiotics. Second, choose fresh meats over processed meats like ham, beef, jerky, salami, canned meats, hot dog, etc. There is clear evidence that processed meats are bad for you and can increase cardiovascular risk. However, it's okay to have a hot dog or any other form of processed meats once in a while. If you hardly eat plants, chances are that your diet is deficient in fiber, vitamin C, and even vitamin E. My recommendation is to ensure that you eat generous servings of green vegetables, ideally in raw form, with your meals. I recommend at least 500 grams to 1 kilogram of raw vegetables and fresh fruits every day in your diet. This will ensure optimal fiber intake. Plant-based foods will also provide you with much needed vitamin C and E. Do also include fruits that contain vitamin C like oranges, guava, papaya, etc. Besides, it's an excellent idea to start eating other plant-based foods like beans and pulses at least twice or even thrice a week for variety. I promise this won't slow down your muscle growth if that's what your aim is and the added variety may just be the thing that you were looking for.